зараз із задоволенням передаю слово президенту Зеленського Володимира. Слово вам. Дякую When we are talking about recovery, we are talking about millions of jobs, billions in corporate profits and trillions of GDPs, and not only for Ukraine, but for all our countries, mine and yours, countries that want and will live freely despite any, any predatory ambitions of various Putins whose brains are poisoned by dreams of war. Growth is always based on values, just as strong investments are preceded by trust, so the growth that we are preparing must be preceded by confidence that what has been rebuilt will not fall. And it's not about bricks, but about life in general. The world is abundant with ruins reminding us of the wars of the past and politics in different regions unfortunately is abundant with sick ideas of hatred and resentment which point to possible wars in the future and although no one has the power to cleanse the depths of human nature from the evil that some, sometimes rises to the sore face and destroys and kills But you and I, and right now, we are able to protect life and overcome the ruins after the Russian aggression in such a way as to block the path for evil, meaning for any new aggressions. The eyes of the world are looking at us and at whether we will defeat Russian aggression exactly as freedom deserves to win, that is without compromising our values. Also, the world is watching to see if we will restore normal life in such a way that our transformation will land an ideological defeat on the aggressor. We protect Ukraine and thus we protect freedom. And when we build Ukraine, we'll build freedom. Country, region, continent, world. It's a global task. And I want to thank you. And of course, I, I thank Switzerland, Germany, France, Italy, every country where we have agreed on key principles for recovery. At this conference, we must move from vision to agreements and from agreements to real projects. There is a Ukrainian delegation in London that will present concrete things that we propose to do together. In my turn, I will outline five directions in which we have begun to create foundations for peace. The first, the first is the potential of unity. The second is the potential of stability. The sword is growth potential. The fourth is security potential. And the fifth, extremely important, is the potential of democracy. So, the first point, we are strengthening unity. Ukraine has already succeeded in making the EU as united as it has never been before. This is truly a unity of values, which is reflected in many political, economic sanctions and humanitarian decisions. Ukraine has activated all the power of solidarity for which the EU was conceived. And Ukraine is also activating the moral force of NATO. This is important 
for all of us. What does the world see now? Does it recognize NATO's moral leadership in protecting peace? This is only possible with Ukraine in the alliance, just as Ukraine already belongs to the value space of the EU, we already belong to the NATO security space. De facto. Just as Ukraine is already part of the EU's common market, and on its way to full membership, we are already defending the common space of freedom in the alliance and are only waiting for the courage of the alliance leaders to recognize this really reality politically. Thanks to the same, thanks to the same values, we are developing strong bilateral alliances with such leaders of the democratic world at the United Kingdom, the USA, Canada, Japan, Australia, all the EU members. And this gives us new power in defense, economy and global prospects for democracy. We built, we built our alliances and thus we are safeguarding the level of freedom to which our people are used to. Second, we are strengthening stability. At least 600 million consumers around the world directly depend on our agricultural production. This is a huge potential for food security. At the times of this war, when the Russia blocked our ports and destroyed freedom of navigation in the Black and Azov Seas, the world so, what Ukrainian grain is? Without it, there is the threat of price crisis and social collapse in different countries. We have no partially restored the movement of our agricultural products by sea through two export initiatives. And this is stability for a huge social and economic space from Morocco to Somalia, from China to Lebanon, from Turkey to India, from Spain to Pakistan. Different aspects, different influences, but always a contribution to stability. Uh, another similar area is the energy sector, and I believe that, that there is no alternative to the green transformation of the economy. And Russian aggression has proven that green transformation is one of the key foundations of security. Each strike on our energy facilities and each manifestation of Russian blackmail with the energy crisis ends the area of fossil fuel dominance and all energy habits when entire regions could depend on a single supplier such as Russia. It is green energy that guarantee real energy stability. Ukraine can be and will be one of the key suppliers of clean electricity and green hydrogen to Europe. The potential of this industry alone is about $400 billion. We built agricultural and energy facilities in Ukraine and thus we are protecting the world from chaos. Third point, we strengthen the growth there is currently no place in the world where there is a need to construct and rebuild as many objects as in Ukraine. Every new day of Russian aggression brings new ruins. Thousands, thousands and thousands of destroyed houses, devastated industries, burned lives. Recently, Russia committed also the largest crime of ecocide in the Europe, but blowing up the dam and other structures of the Kachovka hydroelectric power plant. What does all this mean? In Ukraine, there is the largest source of economic, industrial and technological growth in Europe for decades and decades. And by the way, it's not only reconstruction. For example, the green transformation of energy logically stimulates the development of industries such as green metallurgy and green fertilizers. Thanks to its 
natural resources and industrial traditions, Ukraine can become one of the key global centers of green metallurgy. In addition, we have significant reserves of critical resources for the modern economy such as lithium. So by, by building with Ukraine and in Ukraine, we hand off our countries and our countries' companies from recessions. Fourth point, we strengthening security. Of course, this war demonstrates what effective defense against aggression in the modern world means, what weapons are needed, and to what extent what infrastructure is lacking and, and what production is a priority, what technologies save lives on a large scale, and what systems make it possible to make science fiction a reality on the battlefield. From the, from the production of combat drones to conventional artillery, from a near shield that covers an entire country or even a, a region to, to shelters in every school, from infrastructure that is built so that it cannot be destroyed by the Iranian Shahids to cyberspace that remains resilient even in the, in the face of constant cyber attacks. We are, doing, we are doing all this in Ukraine and we need, we need the experience of our partners in all of this. We build security together and thus we convince the world that democracies cannot be defeated. And finally, the fifth point, democracy. Russia invaded Ukraine not only to steal our land, resources and people, it's obvious that without Ukraine there can be no Russian empire. And it is equally obvious that Russia's bosses are very, very afraid of our democracy. Yes, why? Because democracy paves the way for the, for the rule of law, getting rid of corruption and to the key principle of our countries, every person matters. It's very important. And of course, democracy is in the nature of Ukrainians. And we would strengthen it anyway, no matter what they think or do in Russia. But we all have to realize that the more democracy we have, the greater is strengthened in our entire region. The more rule of law we have, the, the more law will work here on the eastern flank of Europe. And the more transparent Ukraine is, the uglier any corruption model will look in Russia. Even Russia's full-scale aggression has not stopped our internal reforms. Ukraine will be associated with a fair, fair court just as it is now associated with courage, step by step. Yes, step by step, we will get there. Thanks to digital transformation, we will show the world how, how the state can function effectively without any contact between an official and a citizen or a company. All public services can and will be transferred online from business registration or social assistance to any, any other public service. And we are already exporting our digitalization to other regions, other countries. We have started such cooperation with Estonia and will continue with Colombia and Zambia. And I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that this is just the beginning. Please be sure to ask our uh, team, our government officials for more details about this. And this is truly an example of social progress through technology. Um, even before February 24th, we started uh, dismantling the old oligarch model of economic relations from the post-Soviet period. And this is not just something about the personalities of the oligarchs, it is about changing their approach to economic relations. 
financial transparency and banking system resilience, market liberalization and competition stimulation, guaranteeing equal and legal conditions for every economic entity are all areas in which we made progress before February 24 and of course which are important, very important now. We build institutions and continue reforms in Ukraine and thus we are defending democracy and preserving it as a, as a hope for all, at least in our region, that democracy will prevail. Dear ladies and gentlemen, by building Ukraine, we are building much more than one country. We build the world as it will be during the lifetime of our generation and after us. Will it be peaceful? Will it be stable? Will it be democratic? It depends on each and every one of us. And I invite all of you to Ukraine. By the way, Prime Minister Rishi, we, we, we have not seen each other in Kyiv for quite a while. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for your support. Thank you, UK. Slava Ukraini.